So hello everybody, welcome to the Cape Pelutra Institute in the Bahamas where I work. We're a kind of small research station um, in the sunny Bahamas, which is very close to Florida in the USA, for those of you that want to figure out where we are. Um, uh, as you can see, bright we're in the UK right now. Pretty warm, I'm here in a t-shirt. And I'm just gonna switch the camera around so you guys aren't looking at me, but can see the amazing scenery that we've got around us. So, okay. So we're gonna go up here. This is our, um, our graduate accommodation block where some of our students live. And you can get a really good view of the sea, which is just over there. Oh, wow. Up top. So if we go up the stairs here. Some idea where we are. So there's the sea. Sun's just coming up over there. It's morning here, early morning. And here's our campus. So this is our little community where we live. Just down there is my office building where I work. And just beyond that is our wet lab and aquarium. And we're gonna go take a walk over there and visit that aquarium. Sorry if it's a bit windy up here. So where we are is on the tip of a really long narrow island. So all around us is sea out here. So it's a great place to study marine life um, and get to see all the animals that we have in the sea around us. Let's see if I can find a spot out of the wind. Maybe that's a bit better for the wind. Wow, it looks amazing. It is a pretty great place to live and not too bad a place to be on lockdown during this coronavirus pandemic. Yeah, it looks when beautiful. That sea is so blue. Yeah, absolutely. So a few years ago, uh, Commander Chris Hatfield posted a picture from the International Space Station of our little turf right out here going, oh. this is the most amazing blue um, that I've ever seen. This is one of my favorite spots to look at in space. So we have a load of different marine habitats out here that we regularly go out to and study in boats. But sometimes it's quite a lot of effort to keep going back out to study animals where they live. So sometimes we bring those animals back into the lab so that we can study them more closely. Um, so I'm gonna head over that way now. The oh, good news hang out. is that Amelia has come back now and she's been watching ever since you started. So that's great. <laughs> okay, well you just let me know when we're ready to start. Um, properly, should we head over to the lab now? Yeah, we're, we're ready when you are. Amelia's back, aren't you? Thumbs up, Amelia. <laughs> there we go. Great, okay. So, let's go head on over. You can start to see now, maybe. I'll slow down in a bit so you can get a better look. So this is our aquarium facility. So you can see some tanks in front of us where um, we keep animals. And all of these pipes and things here are bringing in water from the sea out there. So we pipe water in directly from the sea um, to fill our tanks and keep our little animals alive. So we can see the water coming into one of the tanks here. So here's one of our tanks. Now this tank doesn't have too much in it right now. Um, just some sand and some seagrass. In this little clump of algae down here is a little baby lobster that we found. But the main reason we have this tank set up is because we were doing an experiment 
looking at um, a very unusual animal that we find here in the Bahamas called a conch. And these are giant snails. Now, let me know if you can see this one. Yeah, so yeah. That's my holding up the snail. And the animal is kind of inside of there now. It's kind of it's a bit scared and run away, but you can see how beautiful and pink the inside of that shell is. And they're absolutely huge. That's my hand. And this is a baby. This is about as small as um, you would find them in the wild. Um, and certainly this is way too small to be caught. Now, these things occur in the hundreds out there in the shallow waters um, just off our beach. And they're a really popular food source here in the Bahamas. If you come to the Bahamas, it's one of the signature dishes um, that you'll eat. And in fact, if we look, so we're gonna have a closer look at that guy before I put him back in the water. And you can just, and also the shells are used to make decorations and jewelry because of the pretty pink color. But conch are a huge part of Bahamian culture. Um, I'm just gonna show you, oh, come back to me now for a second. So you can see the, our logo is in fact a conch shell. Um, and the conch shell is on the Bahamas National Coat of Arms. And it's a really, really popular dish um, food in the Bahamas because inside that shell is a huge chunk of snail meat. So people um, eat these giant marine snails. And when I say giant, this is the shell of a grown up one. So you saw the little baby one that was about the size of my hand. This one is probably bigger than my head. Um, and this is about the size that you would catch to eat. Um, so these things are absolutely enormous. This is, um, this weighs quite a lot. Let's hold it still there. Hopefully you can all get a good look at that. And these guys just live crawling around on the seabed, um, grazing algae and moss and other plants. So I'll show you, go back to the tank view. Here we go. So this little guy crawls around on the sand, just grazing little bits of algae and moss that are growing there. And in fact, they're really good at cre keeping our tanks clean. So maybe you can see it. Uh, let's see if I can get a good view. On the edge here, you can see a kind of line of moss and algae growing on the side of the tank. But at the bottom of it, it's a bit cleaner. And that's where these um, conks have crawled up and scraped it all away. Oh, and here's another little guy, a stowaway really. Um, this is a little sea urchin that's got into one of our tanks. So again, because there's seawater coming in, being pumped in directly from the sea, sometimes little baby animals get sucked into our pipes um, and end up living in our tanks, even though we didn't mean them to. So we try and provide a home for them as well. Um, and all the animals that we have in these tanks will end up going back into the sea. Oh, you want to see the sea action again? <laughs> see if you can have a look at this guy. Amelia looks particularly excited about this sea urchin. He, he's pretty cute, isn't he? <laughs> um, there we go. Aww. So, so how big would that get? Is that a baby? Yeah, that's a really little baby. There's my finger. It's a teeny tiny one. So oh. we, this is what we see a lot, is that animals get sucked in as what we call larvae. That's like the really baby form of the animals. While they're floating around in the water, they get sucked into our tanks and then they grow up in our tanks and they get to be too big to escape um, down the hole in the middle where the water drains out of. So we end up having a lot of these um, little animals growing up in our tanks. Now, if we go and have a look at one of our other tanks, we can see um, some of the other work that our scientists work on. So, and I should say, 
all of this is not just me. There are lots of other scientists that work here as well, studying different things. So we have a team of scientists here um, that are studying corals. So let's see if we can get a good look. Down at the bottom of the tank there are some corals um, on a bit of rock. And what we're doing in these tanks is trying to grow new corals. So we're growing um, in two different ways, really. One way that we do it is we get a bit of coral from the wild and we break it into smaller pieces. And when we cut it up into smaller pieces, it grows a lot faster. So we can take one piece of coral, chop it up into lots of smaller pieces, and those pieces will all grow into new coral colonies. Um, and in that way, and then what we do is we take those, um, out, those little, bits of coral that have grown into new corals and put them back out on the reefs. And what we're hoping to do there is to be able to um, restore populations of corals back to uh, the sizes that they used to be um, before corals started dying out. So another way that we try and grow corals is we collect the eggs and the spawn of the corals from the wild and then we bring them into the lab so that they can grow out um, when they're and get to a bigger size in the safety of these tanks. So these tanks don't have any predators or anything in that might hurt the corals. So these little shapes down here, these are little 3D printed ceramic shapes um, that we've made for the little baby corals to attach onto. So they're teeny tiny, you can't really see them in this picture, but hopefully after this session, I'll send through some pictures that Amber can put up and you guys will be able to see what these baby corals look like. And eventually the little babies will grow up to be big chunks of coral like this one. And we'll go and have a look at one of our other coral tanks as well. So Nick, you were saying you had to um, restore the um, coral reefs. Um, why, why are they dying out um, in the Bahamas? Well, um, let's go have a look at some more here. Here's some more little bits of coral. So over here, I'll just point out this one. So that's a kind of big chunk of brain coral there. And then these are the little pieces that we've cut off of that that will eventually grow into new bits of coral. Now, the, we have um, a bit of a problem here in the Bahamas with overheating. So sometimes our corals get too warm, the water gets too warm for them, they get hot, um, and that causes them to lose the um, algae that's living inside them and providing them with food. Um, so eventually they lose their food. Um, we also have a problem um, with diseases um, and that increases as the water becomes warmer. So we've got a new disease, um, unfortunately, that's just sweeping through the Caribbean um, called coral tissue loss disease. And we don't really know what's causing that. It's a new disease. It's a bit like, you know, what's happening now with the coronavirus. Um, but that's happening to the corals too. So corals get sick just like we do. Um, and sometimes they need looking after. Now the problem is our oceans we know are getting warmer and that makes it harder for the corals to survive. Um, and what we're doing actually is we're, we're picking out those corals which seem to be really good at surviving and trying to grow new ones of these corals um, to plant back out. So what we're doing is we're getting healthy corals um, and trying to put those back out and grow new healthy corals and put them back out on the reefs. Um, so basically there's more of these healthy ones out there um, that are more resistant to dying off. Well, it sounds like you're doing really, really important work out there with your colleagues then, helping these coral reefs. Absolutely, this is incredibly important work. Um, and you know, we're just starting really. So, oh, it's a bit noisy there. What we're doing, um, is really at the very beginning. I'll give you a little insight into our into our lab. So we're just um, oh, have a look behind me. So in this lab behind me, oh no, you can just see the reflection. Right. 
So we're just setting up a, a new lab to do all this at a much bigger scale. So right now, this is all um, very small scale experimental work, but in the next few years, we're gonna be doing tons and tons more of this kind of work. So these are some of the older corals growing on some of these little shapes. And what we do is we take these little shapes when the corals have got big enough and put them back out on the reefs. And so what we're doing here is trying to figure out what's the best way to grow corals. How can we do this quickly um, and more effectively so that we can basically increase um, the number of corals out there and try and uh, reverse this decline. And one of the projects that we're involved with run by our partners in this, the Perry Institute for Marine Science, um, is called reversing the decline in the Bahamas. So our whole aim is to try and halt um, this decline that we're seeing in coral reefs. So that's our corals. We'll now move over, there's an empty tank. So we've got quite a few empty tanks right now um, because a lot of our staff have had to go um, on a break while we have this virus here, but we do still have some other animals. So in this one is a bit different. This tank is a bit of a land tank. Now let's see if you can have a look in here. Let me know if the sun is bad. This is our crab tank. Whoa. <laughs> so in here, we've got some big land crabs. Let's see, there's another guy over here. He looks like he's going for you, that one. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're pretty feisty. Um, oh, he doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't like us. So these guys spend almost their whole life on the land and they they make a living by foraging around oh there's a group of them over there oh they've got scary red eyes those ones haven't they and they have all sorts of different colors um if you look these are called black crabs but if you look at the top of one of the other ones there he's got um funny white coloration on the top of his shell and they seem to change color a bit oh the one in the middle there has got a little tracker glued to the top of his shell. Aww. So we work to track the movements of these guys. Um, Was he just climbing on top of the other one? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, they climb all over each other. Um, <laughs> oh, that one's giving together. <laughs> so what we're doing here is trying to understand how climate change is going to affect these crabs because Again, these are a really big part of the ecosystem here. Let's just come back to my view. So yeah, these crabs are a big part of the ecosystem here. They um, forage in the bush and they eat young saplings and they can actually determine which trees grow in an area because they'll eat certain trees. Um, as they're, as they're becoming young. So these crabs are really important. They're also a really important food source. People here love eating crab. When I, I grew up in the Bahamas, when I was growing up here, we, had, um, we always had crab in the rainy season. So when the rains come, the crabs come out of their burrows and they have to go back to the sea to spawn, to release their little eggs. So even though they live on the land most of their time, these crabs have come from the sea. Um, so they have to go back to the sea to reproduce. They release their eggs into the sea. Those eggs float around and hatch. And then the little crabs, um, once they get big enough, come back onto the land. So although we call them land crabs, they're still definitely um, marine animals of a sort. And they're a really important part of our ecosystem here um, and a, a big food source as well. So we're trying to understand how uh, climate change is going to affect these crabs and in particular, changing rainfall. So these crabs need water to stay alive, um, to keep their gills wet. So, and this is another hint of their marine um, origins. So they, they have to have wet gills in order to get oxygen from the air. And if they dry out too much, they will die and they need water. And right now, we're going through a drought here in South Ilupra. Um, well, we just had our first rain over the last weekend in months. Um, so what we're expecting to see is suddenly all the crabs will be coming out in the next few days to go and release their eggs into the sea. 
And what you see here, it's kind of famous, is these massive um, herds of land crabs coming out all at once when the rains come um, and going back down to the sea. And my student Bill here is getting ready to study, um, study that movement. And that's why we got the trackers on some of these crabs, because we want to track their movements. Now, um, we'll move on to some of our big tanks. Oh, this is so, so exciting. These, <laughs> these tanks are a bit bigger. And in here, let's see if we can, we have what are called, our shark suckers. So these are fish. Oh, I'll try and get a good view. Hang on a sec. Can you see them swimming over there? Let's go look in the other one. Can you see them there? Ah, uh, there we go. That's a good shot. So these guys live by sucking onto the bottom of sharks and other large marine animals. And they hitch a ride on the sharks. So there aren't any sharks in this tank. Um, these guys, you can see the flat bit on the top of their heads. That's what they use to suck onto the bottom of the sharks and other animals like big turtles. They hitch a ride with these animals and they wait for them to feed. And then when the shark feeds on other fish or something, these guys come and eat the scraps. And right now, they know that they get fed um, by humans. So they see me here and they're wondering where their food is. <laughs> so what we're trying to do now is understand the role that these animals play in the food web. Um, and we're doing a study, feeding them different kinds of food and trying to understand how their body reacts to those different kinds of food. And we can then use that information to track how energy moves through a food web. Um, especially with these guys, because they travel around so much attached to sharks and other animals. But it's an absolutely amazing adaptation that they have, that they've developed this sucker pad on the top. And they will attach to anything. They'll attach to my hand if I let them. Um, it does <laughs> kind of hurt a little bit, so I won't. <laughs> but they are pretty curious, and they will very happily come right up to us. Is it, is it stripes I can see on their head? Have they got a pattern? Uh, that's part of the sucker mechanism. So it's a modified, it's a modified fit. Let's go back over to this tank. We might be able to see these guys a bit more clearly now. Ah, cool. Yeah, we can see them now. Oh. <laughs> uh, let's see if we can get them over here. Oh. We've got to balance the light as well. Ah, cool. Yeah, we can see them there. Yeah. Hang on. Ah, uh, they keep moving. So are the, are the suckers on their head where you can see those little ridges? Is that a bit like, you know, like on gecko feet where it's... Exactly. Exactly like that. So that's, that's the suckers that are on the top of their head. So they usually are attached underneath the bottom of the shark. I'll maybe go back to these ones. <laughs> yeah, these guys seem more friendly. So yeah, there's the sucker. So those guys make a whole living just attached to the bottom of other animals, sucking on there. And then we have these little um, glass plates because they kind of like to hang out sometimes holding on to stuff. So one more thing we'll go and have a quick look at See while we're here in our labs. And this is our aquaponics facility. Hey, Walter. Just doing a tour for a school group. This is our aquaponics facility here. And what we're doing here is growing fish in tanks for food. 
So these are freshwater fish called tilapia. So these aren't, so everything else you've seen lives in salt water. These ones live in freshwater tanks. So we grow these fish in the tanks here for food. That is a lot of fish. <laughs> yeah. And then, so those are, the, those are the bigger fish. And then we have some of the little smaller ones in here. And then that's one of the daddy fish. And then we have some little babies in some of the other tanks over here. So, so we grow fish up in these tanks and then the poop um, and pee from all the fish gets um, carried from the water in these tanks into a filter down here. Uh, mm. <laughs> a bubbling filter. And then that water goes into our lettuce grow beds. And the lettuce uses that pee and poop as food to grow. So we grow plants based on using fertilizer from the water tanks that we grow the fish in. And then that water gets cleaned by the plants and goes back into the fish tanks. So we have this system for growing fish and lettuce together um, where the fish pro provide food for the plants to grow and the plants clean the water for the fish. And that's called aquaponics. That's amazing. In a, in a nutshell. <laughs> it's pretty complicated. This is Walter. Walter is responsible for running this whole system and keeps everything going and keeps everything alive. Hi, Walter. <laughs> Our superhero. Oh. And there's my friend Sophie. She's, she's studying the snakes that we have living here. Um, wow. Now, unfortunately, um, the project she's working on right now is trying to understand um, how snakes are impacted by cars because we quite often see them um, run over on the road. So we're trying to understand. So she's right now dissecting dead snakes uh, that we find on the roads because snakes can't warm themselves up. They need heat from the sun. They often crawl onto the road, which is really hot to get warm. Um, and then sometimes they get hurt. So Sophie's trying to understand that so that we can uh, help look after the snakes on our island. But we do have um, quite a few cool snakes that hang around here as well. And we've been, been seeing a lot more snakes now that there's fewer people around as well. So I'll pause it there um, and maybe see if you guys have any questions. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Nick. Um, I learned loads there as well. I didn't know about those sharks with the suckers on their head. And I'm now going to go and find some cool videos to share with every one of those because they were awesome. Um, so I can see people are putting their hands up already. So as you've all done it before, you can know you can either put your hand up on with the little button or you can type them in the chat or you can do both. Um, but we've been having a great little chat in the in the little group chat as well while you were here with everyone saying how awesome the crabs were and how crazy it was, how big those snails were. They've been having a great time. So the first person that had their hand up was the Miss Lovely Amelia. So I'm going to unmute you now and let you ask your question to Nick. Do you have um, um, any... Like those um, long fish, like the snakes, but they're not exactly fish. Um, eels? Oh, do we have any eels? Yeah. We do have eels here in the Bahamas, but we don't have any in our tanks right now, I'm afraid. Um, so I don't have any that I can show you right now, but we do have big ones called moray eels, and they get really big. Um, they're big and green, and then we have small spotted ones. And in fact, I, I've i seen some of them while I've been out. Um, Can we working. see them? I don't have any here right now. I'm just trying to see if I can find a picture of one that we have. Oh. That I could show you. But I don't have any living in the tank. So we try not to keep too many animals living in the tank because we'd rather have them living in the sea where they belong. We only bring them 
into our labs um, when we need to study them for a short time. Um, ooh, close thing to an eel. We have a snake skin on the wall there. Um, that's of a boa snake. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> that's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'll do, Amelia, is, so Nick spoke to you about moray eels. I will try and find um, a video or, and some pictures and put them on the Facebook group so you can see what they look like. But we also get big eels like that in the UK as well. And I think we've got some videos what? that we took. Yeah, I know. So I think I've got some videos that we took of an eel um, in near Plymouth in, in Devon. Um, so I'll see if I can find those as well. So you, it's amazing that you get to see all these things in tropical countries. But oh, there you go. Nick's got a picture. Let me see if I can spotlight Nick a sec. There you go. Can you see him? Yeah. So those are some of the eels that we have living nearby here. Some eels fight with different animals and they eat them and they play rock, paper and <laughs> with scissors and then whoever wins they eat this, um, oh. the animal. I've seen it on TV. I keep watching David Attenborough and um, Wildlife um, Film. Yeah, and they definitely I've do eat other animals. Adopt um, some animals. I've adopted a turtle and a polar bear. So that one thing cool. we do study here a lot is turtles. We have a lot of turtles um, here in the Bahamas. Ooh. Um, and we try and understand how they live and how they behave. And if you go online, um, on YouTube, you can see some video from the turtle cams that my friend Nathan has been putting out, um, where they attach a camera to the back of the turtle and they record the turtle swimming around with a camera on its back to see what it does when humans aren't looking. Um, so you can find that online if you just search for a turtle cam. Um, I think you can find hours and hours of footage. Ooh, Shark. there's a big. Some people do it on sharks too. And they yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. DNA. Yeah, that's right. Some people have put them on sharks as well to understand what they do. And we have a whole group here as well um, that study sharks and how they move around. We put satellite tags on them to try and understand what they're doing. Oh, here's yeah. some shark teeth. Whoa. A whale shark is the biggest whale in the countryside. That's not yes. quite. A whale shark is the biggest shark. Yeah. And That's it is right. a whale because it says whale shark. <laughs> well, it's a, called a whale shark because it's almost as big as a whale, but it's actually a shark. Um, but they do eat other sharks. Whale sharks eat tiny little animals called plankton. The, and the krill, some animals do eat krill. Like That's right. You've been watching your David Attenborough, haven't you? You've done very well, Amelia. We're very proud of you. And I know what a Dumbo octopus is too. Yes, we did. We looked at that, didn't we, a couple of weeks ago. We all got quite excited about Dumbo. I knew it before somebody said that. And they're orange and they're pink. They're all different kinds of colours. They are, you're right. So thank you so much for your questions, Amelia, and also all of the knowledge that you've just taught us as well. It was very awesome. But Ethan has been patiently waiting to ask his question. So you're very welcome to ask another question in a minute, but I'm just going to let Ethan ask his thank question you. now. That's all right, Amelia. Okay, Ethan, off you go. Do you come across any sharks while you're looking for fish? Or yeah. yeah, we see sharks here uh, quite a lot. So in the shallow water just out here, we see lemon sharks um, a lot of the time especially little babies in the shallow water. Um, so, and sometimes you see them very close, right up close to the beach. Um, but we also see other sharks swimming quite close in, reef sharks. And in the winter, we get visiting bull sharks. And then we have quite large tiger sharks in the Bahamas um, that live on the banks. And they can get really big. They can get um, probably is bigger than that sofa, for sure. 
And then one of my favorite sharks that I've ever been in the water with is these oceanic white sharks. Now they live out in the ocean, open ocean, away from the shallow islands. Um, and they're very curious and they're not scared of people at all. They come up and bump you and um, will look at you in the eye. Um, they're very cool animals to swim around with. That's so yeah, we see, we see a lot of sharks here and the Bahamas is a shark sanctuary. Um, what that means is that it's completely illegal to catch or kill any sharks here. Um, so we have a lot more sharks than other places in the world. Um, and we try our very best to look at, look after our sharks. Um, and people come from all over the world to swim as sharks here. So Ethan touched on a little bit of a question that I had as well. He was saying like, did you see the sharks when you're out looking for corals? So when you're wanting to put mm -hmm. these corals back in once they've grown big enough, do you have to go out, you and your colleagues, like snorkeling and put them back down? Is that part of your job? That's right. I'm trying to see if we have a picture up here, but yeah. Oh, here we go. Yes. So you have to, so all those corals have to be put back out on the reef and planted back out by hand. So here's a picture of one of our divers hanging some bits of coral onto a little, um, what we call a coral tree, which is like um, some posts on the seabed that we hang the coral off to grow on. And that's all done um, by our teams that go out with dive gear. And not just our scientists, but our students that come here and work with us. Um, so we have people that come here to help us and work with us and learn. Um, and they help out with all of this stuff as well. That's really cool. Ethan, did you have another question before I um, go to another question? Uh, you don't have to. <laughs> I, mean, I might need to think about that. That's all right. I'll come back to you in a bit. I know you've always got more than one. <laughs> See you speak to you in a bit. Okay, so we've got another question from Amelia. Do you study epaulet sharks? Ooh. No, we don't. Um, I've never seen one um, alive, um, but they are very cool animals. I don't know a lot about them, um, but we don't study those ones here. They can live on the coral reefs, but they can hold their breath um, without having water, so then the bigger sharks can't get them. And... Um, they just live right on little corals and then it um, breathes um, on the land more than um, us. We can breathe in the sea. Mm -hmm. You seem to know a it lot about sharks and I can see that what I'm going to have to do is on my list of people that I'm adding to, I'm going to need to find a shark expert somewhere as well to come and do a talk all about sharks for you guys. How about that? Would that be good? Yeah, and I can I can see Ethan. Ethan's eyes big as well. He's excited about that. And a thumbs up. We've got so many thumbs up. Cool. I'll have to find a uh, shark expert to come and uh, give a talk to you now that you've had this cool taster of it. I can see you're all excited. So um, I can see Ethan's got another question. So I will get him to ask that now. Okay. What's the, what's the biggest species of crab you get around there? The biggest species of crab? Oh, that's a good question. I think um, it's probably what we call spider crab or king crabs. And I've actually got the shell of one of them right here. Um, so that's... Whoa. Oh, look at those claws. They're huge. I yeah. know. They're just huge. And this is actually too big. This guy's not actually that big. They do get bigger than that as well. You wouldn't want to come into contact with that, would you? <laughs> no. Yeah, you definitely don't want to bite hold of you. Um, but those are also really good eating. Very yummy. Oh, um, Ethan had a question during, actually, as well, that he was asking. Um, those snails you um, showed us, the conchs, are they the biggest snail in the world, or are there some that are even bigger? Oh, that's a very good question. I'm not sure. Um, in terms of weight, there might be... No, 
Well, I think there's definitely some bigger snails than these, um, but these are probably some of the most abundant large snails in the world found all over the place. Um, but they're definitely one of the biggest. I'm not sure that they're the biggest. Um, but yeah, they're, they're pretty big and heavy. Um, and I can show you some pictures um, that I'll give to Amber to put up of what the animals look like when they come out of their shell. I'm just looking around. Oh, here we go. Ah, uh, here we go. So that's what the animals look like when they're coming out of their shell. They've got two little eyes here. Can you see their eyes? Saying hello. And then this is their little feeding proboscis that they stick out to suck up bits of algae off of the mud. Wow, that's super so cool. And their eyes were surprisingly detailed there. I wasn't really... Yeah, yeah, they are. And in fact, I was meeting with my friends at the Natural History Museum in London who were doing a, a study of eyes of these snails um, and trying to understand how those eyes evolve. Um, because they are, they're really, they are really com complicated and interesting eyes. Um, and so this is something scientists are trying to find out more about now. Yeah, um, I really yeah. wasn't expecting that. <laughs> So their main defense is to, is to suck back into their shell um, when they get attacked. So they need really good eyes to know when a predator's coming. Um, and if they can see the predator coming, they can hide in their shell and they're pretty protected because those shells are really, really hard and tough and spiky. Um, so they're really good protection inside these shells. Awesome, they're liking that. They like the spiky shells. <laughs> We've got lots of thumbs up for the spiky shells. Okay, we have one final question now, and that's gonna be from you again, Amelia. This is our final question, and then we will wrap up and let Nick get back to his super important work saving all the marine animals. <laughs> um, can I just tell you something? I have low battery on the iPad. <laughs> oh no, quick, quick. That's all right. We can wrap up super quickly then. Did you have a Did you have a question before we went? Yes. Yeah. Have you seen a new prank at um, washed up at um, the Bahamas? Yeah, I have. We do have lots of new pranks. Um, most of them are, are kind of small, um, but we also have some of their relatives called um, other sea slugs that get really big as well here. So we have quite a lot of new pranks. And yeah, nudibranchs can be really colorful, so they're, they're pretty cool. Um, and I do like spotting those. We don't have anybody studying them right now, um, but- Can they be wrapped up in seaweed sometimes? <laughs> um, I don't think I've ever seen them wrapped up in seaweed. They're normally crawling along over the coral reefs. That's where I tend to see them, living on sea fans. They like to hang out on sea fans. Okay, I can see that someone else I can have to add to the list then. I think I, I know somebody who um, studies and uh, collects and um, writes down the occurrence of nudibranchs and little sea slugs down in Cornwall. Um, so you get them in the UK too. You can find them in rock pools. So I will see if they've got time to come and do a, a talk for us as well at some point. If, we, if we're liking sharks and nudibranchs, it's good to know what you've Can you see sea cucumbers sometimes? Oh, sea cucumbers. Oh, we have lots of sea cucumbers here. Uh, I could have probably gone and got one out if I would have thought about it. Um, but yeah, those, that's one thing we have around a lot around here as well. You um, study both things that I said, like new debranks and um, sea cucumbers? We, we don't study new debranks. We have been doing some studies on sea cucumbers um, because some people like to eat them. Um, I don't. But, you know, my friends, the lobsters, they really like to eat the sea cucumbers. And I really like to eat the lobsters. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Thank you. Great questions again, Amelia, as always. So I think I'm going to let Nick get back to his super important work, if that's OK with you guys. But thank you so much for joining again today, even though I know it's technically a day off from school today here. So I know that it's been yeah. a that you've come anyway. Um, and I think that 
to those that are going to watch this again, they'll probably end up watching it on Monday or Tuesday next week. So hello to everyone that's um, watching on the replay. And sorry you didn't get to ask um, questions live as it didn't happen on a school day. But if you do want to post questions in the Facebook group, then I'm sure Nick and myself will be able to answer any questions you've got through the week um, that you may have not got an opportunity to um, ask today. But I guess the next thing for me to do is I'm going to unmute you and then we're going to say thank you to Nick. Thank you. You're very welcome. Yeah. Thank you again. Cool. So thank you so much again, Nick. It's been awesome. Um, if you send over those pictures and I will post them in the Facebook group. And I've also yeah. made a point that I need to find out for Ethan what the world's biggest snail is and if it is the conch. And I also need to find a video of these sucker sharks, I think, so that we can see them suck sucker fish. Yeah, sucker fish. So oh, they, they're not sharks yeah. themselves. There you go. They Ethan, you're getting it right. <laughs> well, I just wanted to say thank you all so much for joining me here today. It's been really fantastic. And this is some of the really important work that we do here. Um, I'm focusing on this poster here because doing the research is just one part of it. Talking to you guys and telling people about the amazing stuff we're doing is a really, really important part of my job and I love doing it. Um, so thank you all very much for tuning in um, and coming to see some of the work that we're doing here. And you never know, I know we've got some budding marine biologists in the group. Some of them may end up coming out as the education part of your poster one day. What do you think about that guys? I think that would be great if you ended up out there. That would be fantastic. And you are all very welcome. We've got thumbs up for that. So that's good. <laughs> all right. Cheers, Nick. Bye. And bye, everyone else. See you next week. <laughs>